Hi, hello and welcome back. Today I'm out in the smithy. As you can see, it's been a long time since I've done any filming out here. Uh, here's the uh, the Halberg Challenge from 521 when my dad was sick and everything to start with. Here's the Halberton that I made. It's laying over still waiting on to me to hit 250 subscribers so I can give it away. Please, just do like the sign. Like, share, subscribe, and have yourself a blessed day. May God bless each and every one of you. Now, like I said, it's been here. This has been here so long that I've tried to actually try to erase it once, and it just don't happen. So it's going to be a little Windex time. I hope. Hopefully that'll do it. Come on, where you at? That looks like it might do something. Shop become one with the board he'd been on there for so long. I have I've not been out here in a while, a few days. That's a while. So anyway. If my wrist can stand it. I've not done any of the, uh, when I went to the hammer ends here, uh, I went as a, I don't have my shirt on for that, but I went as a full member of the, a new member that was juried in, and uh, they, you submit knives, they scrutinize the knives, they do everything, and uh, they're mainly a stock removal, but there's still a lot of people in there that does forging, but there's a lot of people that stock removal. On the end, uh, the guild that I got into, it's kind of a dumb luck accident, but I got into it, and they decided that I was worthy of their uh, toolage. So, so I became a member of the Georgia Custom Knife Makers Guild, and we have several in here. We have knife makers from the Flint River uh, Knife Club. We have uh, members from Alabama, from Florida, and North Carolina. And it was one of the members from North Carolina that actually set up the hammer in, or was part of the hammer in at uh, Track Rock. So that. That video will be out before this one, so anyway, or at least day one will be anyway on that one. So I'm going to, so today, like I said, I got juried in, there's three of them, and they like my knives, they scrutinize that, the sheaths, everything about them, and they said, you look like a fellow that we could we could use in our, in our guide, so, and it's a good guide. I mean, Pops Knife Supply is in it. That was one of the ones that uh, one of the master knife makers there at Pops that uh, one of the owners, they were knife makers, all, I think it's four or five of them, but anyway, they, they are all knife makers. And they're at Blade every year or so, and they're moving, but still, from Brazelton to Gainesville. It's just a few miles, probably 10, 10 to 20 mile range, something like that, depending exactly where they go around Gainesville. That's a pretty good sized place anymore. But uh, with that said, I've been a member now for a couple of, about three months, I guess it has been. And I've just, I've not made, I've not come out here and actually forged a knife. Well, that's technically not right. I did forge some penny knives. It didn't take just a few minutes to forge them because they were small knives for the year. Reenactors, yeah, my little goat. <laughs> there. Anyway, he's growing like a weed uh, since I've been bottle feeding him. I'm trying to wean him right now. He's old enough to wean. He's half again as big as his mama, so it's time for him to be weaned. So, anyway, get back on on this. So, like I said, I am in now a member of it, and I've been to two events and I hope to do more but the next event will be while I'm in Colorado I'm trying to procure 
my handle material for the next year. I have went through a lot of it this year. I have made a bunch of little screwdrivers, prosimium rods, a little short two and three finger knives, the penny knives, a couple of folders, uh, mini uh, just friction folders as uh, penny knives for the recreator, reenactors of the the old flintlock thing. I made a lot of tools for the flintlock society. I mean. And I did it a quarter inch bar so I didn't have to hit hard and used my little hammer on it so my hand am well I and I've been three weeks with on the shot right now so it's the steroids is starting to kick in a little bit so I can maybe do a little bit more hammering but other than that I've not really done anything to amount to anything. You know, I played up there at Young Harris in the coal forging on a big anvil big anvil. I got anvil envy. But anyway, I played on it and that's what set my hand off to needing another shot. So And I toughed it out as much as I could do till I couldn't stand it no more. And so I went and got that. So I'm going to take this easy and just use a little my little hammer and what was I for this? I'm going to try the Sam Towns challenge. The Bowie Knife tra challenge now this year and I'm going to I'm not necessarily cheat but I'm gonna I'm gonna start with a flat bar of steel that I will do a little fortune on and beat around on a little bit as much as I can but when it comes right down to it uh, like I said after I beat around on the tip and first one thing and another and making a tang and uh, so I'll uh, I don't know if it'd be called cheating, but it's still, it's making a knife. And like I said, I'm not going to start with a piece of a square stock, you know, four inch square and beat it down and make a knife out of it. No, I'm going to use what's available to me. And what's available to me is, for this year, is Farrier's Rasp. I'm going to make a Bowie knife out of it. Now, to get started on this Bowie knife, first thing you got to do with it other than get it hot is grind the to grind both edges you gotta grind them flat get rid of these teeth on there and do a little bit up the sides whichever side you think is going to be the blade side you want to do a little bit there so when you're hammering you don't hammer in coal shuts or anything else so that's the only bad thing about using a file. Like, these were like 1045 steel, so that hopefully they'll hit them on. Maybe they may, might be 1060. I don't know. But I do know that they are resharpenable. And this, and I've got several. So got them gifted to me. So this is what I'm going to try. This is what I'm going to use just to see if I can do it with this. I know I can do it. It's just doing it with one of these. Hey, if it fails. I'm out nothing. At least I've tried the challenge. So, and past years I've not done it uh, from Sam's challenge. And so, one thing or another was wrong or whatever. But this year I'm going to try it. Hurt paw and all. So, I'm going to give this a whirl. So, let's get over here on the 1 by 42 right here in just a second after I set it up. And we'll grind the edges off of it, and we'll either come back to the chalkboard and, and see what kind of design we want to do, whether it's a harpoon point, clip point, or what. But we got to have a a clip on it, whether it's harpoon or or just a straight clip or something like that, one third of the length of the blade. So, and the blade needs to be about nine inches long. Maybe nine and a half. We'll see what we can get. All right. Let's get over here. Get on it.
Well, that was a new used belt. So, let's go ahead and put that on there. So, it's a 36 grit. Okay, that's just up a little ways. I, I don't know, probably an eighth of an inch up from the edges on both sides. They're fairly clear. There's no lines down to it. I got rid of them other than my, my grinding lines. So, so now, next thing I guess is go over back to the blackboard and see what kind of knife we want to make. Okay, we're back here at the board. Now, here's the steel that I've got. It is a total of 14 inches of steel with a two and three quarter inch tang. So, that's with this. So I've got plenty of steel and it's probably an inch and a half wide. Uh, it's an inch and five eighths wide. So, that's good. Right there. So, now, I've got the got the edges all the all the coal shuts out of it or could be and stress risers. You know, size is not gonna have much stress rising on this. I don't know how much whacking and stacking you're gonna do with this, but I'm I've never made one from this. And these are the reasons why these these lines on here. And plus the fact that it's a lower quality, I mean it's a lower alloy than 1095, which I like to use a lot. And 1095 just seems to click for me. There's a steel out there for everybody that clicks with it. Maybe 1084, maybe 1075, maybe uh, stainless steel even. Knock yourself out. Make something with it. Don't just sit around. Get out and do something. Doesn't have to be a knife, you know be anything be widgets if you want to make widgets make widgets but make them don't sit there and watch the TV and let that thing ruin your brain so now with this right here what do we want do do we want a normal buoy
just with a simple S guard and handle. Or do we want to do one Or do we want to do one of these? That's a little extreme, but do the maybe do a, a recurve harpoon point. And do a full tang and put bolsters on it. I've done them both ways now, or maybe put and just maybe go old school. I'm talking about old school buoy and just and just do the old school buoy just like this it with the antler handle. I have the antlers. This is a straight guard. They're brass, they're straight. There is no sparring bar on this, on the old school ones. There's no fuller that runs through here on some of the old ones. But there is an antler handle. So I may do that. That right there would be more in line with a more authentic style. It'd be about this shape right here. And it's massive. Well, I'm not going to make it as massive. But this has got to be, this clip needs to be one third of this length right here for the challenge. And I don't think it was on the other ones. I seen yesterday I seen a couple of knives from 1861 or they was they was stamped 1861 and I forget the name of them, but they was for the CSA, the Confederate States of America. And they was not shaped anything like this. Not at all no way shape form or fashion was a yeah one of them mount come down like that had and then had a handle on it like that just a point just a drop point like that right there just a straight off edge and the other one Had more, more of a trapper style or a pelting style point on it, and it come out, it kind of swooped up and come around. That swoop wasn't that hard of that big, and it didn't right, and it just come around like this. But it was round. I didn't take any pictures of it. I wish I had it, but I didn't. I was st being stupid. And uh, the feller wanted a, a big price for them, and they wasn't that wide either, or that long. And it had a, it had the coffin style handle on it. But 
like that. Now it wasn't fixed. They neither one of them was fixed as bayonets or anything else. They was just belt carry knives. But the feller called them both buoys. They didn't say buoys on them, but they give the the name of the company. I forget what it was. I wish I'd have took a picture of them. World's worst with names. But anyway, with that. But they was marked eighteen. One was marked eighteen sixty one. The other was marked eighteen sixty three. They both had CSA on them. And then the name on the other side. They was steel, and they looked really good. So, but they didn't have any sheaths or anything. I mean, they was you could see steel, like somebody had steel wooled them and got whatever off of them it was, or they had kept them up somewhere, or somebody was a good, real good faker. I don't know, but anyway, the price he wanted for them, they would have probably been. And well, it had been a real price for a knife. Hopefully, yeah. And watermelons flop and dropping. Looks like, sounds like. Anyway, with that. But I think that I will go with something like this and use a. And use a an antler handle and do this right here so I need to I guess get the forge up and get it warmed up right real good this right here is bent and the next thing I'm going to do is I'll come in here once it gets hot is I will start flattening these grooves down with a hammer and I'll do that it don't I'm not going to hit it real hard or anything else like that and then we will try to establish a point and then when I go to curl it I will bend it and make it come up a little bit there and leave it straight so the point basically and some of the bevel will be about basically all I'm going to forge on this except for a tang when I get it down and I'll forge a tang in a little later once I get everything established on this on this end of it worry about the point and the butt will take care of itself just it just follows anyway so so let me get this let me get the forge lit and get it hot and the way it's been running here lately I've got a I need to take it apart and do some servicing on it. It's only about two, two, maybe three years old. Doing a lot of stuff there. Well, whichever it was, it's been well serviced. I mean, it has provided a lot of work out of it. Sometimes it only runs 20, 30 minutes at a time. Sometimes it runs all day. And it don't say anything. It don't gives me no trouble whatsoever. I just light it and let it go. Now, every once in a while, since there's no outlet for it, the, all the heat is retained behind the door. It's burning a little spot there between the door and the top of it. So a little heat comes out of it that way. And uh, sometimes it will get hot and it will, you can see no flame in there it up the whole inside of it I mean just blistering hot I'm talking about blistering like two power gloves on to reach in with a set of 18 inch tongs to get something that's how hot it gets and it'll pop every once in a while and you throttle back the fuel a little bit and it'll cool down some and uh, so and but still it's just you don't get to see the little blue flames in there, the little jets in there, because it, when this stuff hot, heats up, and you leave something in it to be annealed overnight, it's hot the next day. So you have to be careful with it, because it holds heat like a thermos, and a good one. So, but anyway, it's a dandy. I love it. I'd make another one just like it if I wanted to. So, if I needed it. But this one's plenty big enough. 16 inches, most I can put in there. So I'm not going any bigger than that for any reason. 
other than just working on bar steel. I'm going to put one end in, do it. If I have to turn it around to do something else on the other end, fine. But that's it. No swords. No, this, you know, I might make one with 15, 16 inch blade on it, but no, nothing else any longer. Uh, swords is not my calling. I don't care nothing for them. Never have. But knives, yeah, they're all just little swords anyway. And the beautiful thing about a knife is, if you're in an emergency situation, the beautiful thing about a knife is over, say, a gun, a muzzleloader, whatever else like that right there, a knife works broken. A gun does not. So, always keep a knife with you. Alright. Okay, it's only been just a few minutes here. And it's already up to temperature to beat it flat. So. I mean, literally less than five minutes. Flat-sized hammer. And just start knocking it down. I'm sorry. Three sixteenths. Hopefully you can see it. Okay, and they're made by blue. Yeah, they're they're sackets. These are because the nib, the nibs is not the same length or anything, same size, and and they're not as good as the ones I was using. But I got these at a good price, so I bought them. And uh, these are Farrier's tongs or panel tongs it's actually what they are and they got that hole little button hole in the bottom in there little concave in there these are fantastic I don't know who ever come up with the design but I like it and like I said I used them for just uh, raise the blacksmiths I used his for probably a day or so and I said I got another pair of their seconds for this money and I said I'll take them. He didn't even have to tell me they seconds. <laughs> but he did. So you can tell me the jaws are not the same thickness. The grind bands around them is not the same. Everything. But other than that, they are fantastic. They work. Forge. So 
not real conducive to having picking things up. Yep. I hope 
whole lot, but it will some. Gummy. I should have cut. Keep a plow disc. Alright, gotta change batteries. Okay, I have to keep a plow disc over my slack tub right there to keep the chickens from drinking it. And I leave had the door open.
Okay, I went and got, got my glove. It's a little bit tighter in here. I tightened this up good. My wrist is starting to hurt, but not bad. A couple of ibuprofen will take care of that little pain. As long as it don't get no worse. If it gets worse, I'll shut it down. This is the this is the edge of the blade, and when I go to hammering it out, it will make this curve around and get we'll get a clip out of it, a lot of it. That's the reason I've, I've taken it down pretty good bit down through there. Anything that I don't need, I can always knock off. But I got a steel ruler up here. Need a hook ruler. Need to make a few of them. That's going to be about four inches, and I think I started at about three, so I've got it to grow that much. And it's probably thin here, it's kind of distal taper this way, but I've left the edge thick, a lot thicker, so there'll be more here to pull out to make it curve more. So, do you know it's too cold to strike? But that's okay. It's still making a knife. Even though it is some kind of like that. Now. Okay, okay. We're gonna put a little we're gonna do a little bit of wax forging right here just for a second. Need a little more heat to do that. Well, let's get this a little bit more of heat. That's a pre bend. You do that whack forging over the over the horn. You put your bend in when you start pulling it down and it with your tapers in. It'll make it curve back up and straighten up. And we'll do some, uh, with that kind of clip point and everything, we'll do a little whack forging here on the face of the anvil when we get it close. Then we'll do our set downs for our ricasso and our tang so we can draw them out. And that's probably all I'll do today. I won't grind it or anything. I'll just let it thermal cycle a couple of times and then I'll tire loose on the grinder here probably tomorrow and but I'll document it and I need to document it put it on uh, on Instagram so anyway so today's date is 925 of uh, 2023 this is Monday there's a video out of mine today so I know this will be later on. This will probably be the end of October, first of November, when I'm 
gone, so I'm gonna be, I'll be booking these up. And, but I will go kinda on my Instagram page. My Instagram is dogboneyes1. They locked up in all of their glory meta, which is Google and all that, has locked me out of Facebook and my page on Facebook and they've knocked me they locked me out of my dog bone knives. I can still send it stuff, I just can't get on it. I don't understand that. I cannot physically I cannot my computer, my phone, nothing will let me get, get I can't get well I can get on on uh, Facebook with my phone. And that's it. Can't get it on nothing else. And I can get on Instagram, but I can only get on Dog Bone Knives one. Can't get on Dog Bone Knives with nothing. I and there's nobody, there's no human that works at Google, evidently, because they give you no contact number for a person. You have to answer the questions. They give you a list of questions, and if your problem's not on there, sorry, yeah, they can't help you. I'm not gonna help you. So anyway, let's get back down here on this. That's my, that's my bitch for the day, I guess. Yeah, there we go. Let's go looks good. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, stay down here. thing he learned doing uh, forged in fire was time management and heat management, moving mass.
and it's once you get down to where you're moving mass and get it done and that's where that comes from you got so that was the most important thing that he learned was, was mass management heat heat and mass see that's hot still real thick on this edge right here if you can see it, watch me. The chalk it here. You can see it. It's still real thick, which is good. It's a good thing. That means if I gotta whack forge it again to curve it over again, I can, I've got plenty of metal there to help straighten it back up. And on the on this, on the forge, zoom in on it. Now this, I mean, it's real time. I mean, I could, sorry, cut it off. It said, zoomed it in, but I could walk over there right now and it'd be hard enough to take out and forge on it, and it's only been a few seconds. Let's see. Plenty hot enough to forge. Yep, plenty hot enough. You hear them? Well, I'm gonna forge this and I'll zoom it back in a minute. But it's still got a little heat in it. About to, about to end off.
There you go. When you wrinkle the edge like that, you know you've you've been it, bent the edge. So that's good. That'll help. That will help.
got there. Almost. on YouTube has done series about the junkyard steel and everything else. Well, they can have it. They want, if they want to take the chance with their name in junkyard steel, then that's their business, not mine. I don't do it. in for a piece of equipment and they'll be the wrong size. Well then we'll take them back once they've been taken out of the package that manufacturer wants so they're stuck with bearings that they can't use. So his is new in the box. When he gets them they bring them to him, well they 
most of the time there's no box that he gets or anything else like that. But, uh, you know, or maybe they've misread the information or whatever on the that. But anyway, he gets new bearings. They're new, they're not used. They're new. What turning they've done is what in quality control and what he plays with while he's turning them before he takes them apart. So that is that is fantastic doing that, getting new steel that you know what it is. It's never been stressed, put under them kind of stresses. Because when it leaves the factory, it's de-stressed and then heat treated. Just like you would do on a knife. You'd heat treat it and you know, or run it through the thermocycles a few times. So. so that is that. But like I said, there's a lot of people, they don't see anything wrong with the junkyard steel, and they want to put their name on it and let it go out into this world as junkyard steel. Tell the customers, hey, it's junkyard steel. I can't stand behind it. You know, I, I can't do that. I cannot do that. Personally. If it costs you $5 at the junkyard to get a leaf spring, You've made a lot of tools out of leaf spring. That's, that's all these mine over here on this on the sample stuff. That's what they're made out of. Every one of them is made out of a. Uh, let's see, this one was made. See my top. Now this is this is my steel, my fuller is. The rest of the harder tools, my my hammer eye drift and everything else is made. From car springs. So, and I've got two or three around here that has shattered because they was car springs. Not where I've been working on them either. I'm talking about in, in the middle or above, just right above where I've been doing. But I heat treat the whole thing and then temper the whole thing back and then take a little bit on the torch and temper the tops a little further back. So they don't chip off. So.
for the blade. It's a little longer than wanted, and so is the recurve, the clip point. So what else do we want to do? We need to be careful here and we don't want to. About an inch of this for a tasso. About an inch. But I don't think so anyway. up so fast that you don't have time to think about it hurting. I did it on the blade side. And this side too. Pretty darn quick. You take it in there with a lead you go. See what it does. It's right there. It's just the tang. I did it. Okay. Okay. Because I've done that. And we'll, we'll experiment here.
Okay, I just put the, put the tang that I cut off earlier, and I just bent. Put it in the, in the forge. I'm going to dip it in water when it gets hot enough. See if it'll break. See if it breaks in the water. If this is a low carb, as I think it is, 1045 or so, then it shouldn't break. If it breaks, it's going to be a little bit higher. Water is quick. If it's too quick. They, they claim the 10 series steels are water quench. I ain't never had a luck with them, dude. They always break with me. Unless I just in and out. I'm a set and I hum on or something. And just in and out fast. I mean, just barely enough time to get the blade wet. Burn. Just a little bit more here. I may not have showed it bending her a while ago. I mean, it's not been close. But anyway, it bent. Now, uh, heat treated it. And it's in water. That hurt. Now, let's check your grain. Now, I don't know about you, come on, finger, finger, come on, maybe we we'll widen it on out there just a little bit, alright, is that, look at that, that's some fine grain right there, this thing may be good enough for a knife after all, but anyway, like I said, I don't trust it. Not with all the cold shuts in it. The steel's probably good enough to that'll make a good a dandy knife forever in a day if you just grind it and don't uh, or maybe you know, just grind it then heat treat it without taking much off of it. Going like that. Probably be bees knees. Oh. 
but that that's not the end all be all of a test but uh, about being good to do anything with. But it's a good indicator that it will harden. And it's a lower carbon state. Sand out. By the time I get to Hamana, and what's going to get lost? 
two chop gears. There's a few little spots there, but that's plenty enough to, to get started down. Yeah, I know it's wonky, it's everything, but I'm gonna put it back in here and I'm gonna try to tap it straight a little bit. Then I'm gonna see about putting a C clamp on it. And if I've got a place to hang it, I thought I had a place at one time, but it didn't. So Usually I just laid the little knives over the, just kind of down like that. Let them lay there and do that. I may do that again with this one. Just let it lay there on the side. say that I could have done a better job before I hurt my hand. That's not the point. The point is I've not done it in a long time because of my hand. It's not that I'm any better or any worse. It just I just hadn't done it in a while, in a pretty good while. So anyway, well, this happened probably, I don't know, not hardly a year ago, but it happened a long time ago. Not last December. So. When it's bad enough that you can't turn on the sink or the shower with your right hand, and you know the shots wore off. Yeah. All right, let's see if it's. here in a minute when it cools off and see what it is. To make sure I'm still within spec.
Not bad. Well, Todd's hot. It was hot. Nothing major. Well, anyway, I started to tell you a dozen times on this, on Papa. He said, what he found out was, when it turns to black heat, that you could dip it in the water and cool it off without any chance of hardening it. So because it's, it's below its oscillation side, mark side, all this. He said, once you get get water that stay on it, it's cool enough to handle. It's not hot, it's not it's not refrigerator cold, but still. I first looked at him like he's crazy and he's seen that. And uh, he told me he said, hey, water will stay on it, it's cool enough for your hand and it's ready for all this time to cycle. To even harden. He said the best thing you can do is probably do it like that, bust a little uh, the scale off. Right there it is. So now and everybody see it come out red. He's I turned the can right off and started again. Or anything like that. I usually don't do that unless I'm setting up and moving. Go somewhere else. today boys and girls men women children uh, that's today that's a nice cut cut out the edges ground all the stress risers off the edge top and bottom gallon bevels on it clip established it's not a real big one but I can turn I can turn it down a little bit and just pull it on out then I've got my Ricasso area right here, about an inch back. And then I've got enough that if I have to, I can make a, a full tang, a hidden tang, or a uh, tang with a pommel nut on it, a uh, handle with a pommel nut. So, now, this is still a little thick back here, but it's come from thick up here back to thin, and from thick here in the middle down to thin on the front. It's a little grinded have to do right in here but that's okay now yeah that ain't bad for a cripple white boy especially the ones that's crippled too high for crutches like I am so oh lordy so now what I'm gonna do with this right here it's been done and you can I can move it and bend it I could probably bend it double if I wanted to it's pretty soft. But since that was one time cycling, right there, I'm going to take this. Don't be hit it, get cold. Um, don't do that. I'm going to take and turn the forge off, and I'm going to lay it in the forge. And you can look in the forge and see just how doggone screaming hot that is. Now, oh, God, that hurts my hand. Oh, yep, yeah, my hand's it's screaming. Tell me I'm stupid. I know, I know. Pain pill time? Nope. I'm broken time. I guess it is that pain pill. Now, Gas off, main gas off. Control gas, little valve off. And then the fan off. 
blow everything out of it before it does. Now, now I think I'm going to put tang in first. Like that. Yeah. That is hot. I mean hot. And that thing will be soft as a tub of butter tomorrow. Might be too hot, hot for me to get a hold of. And I've only been out here probably real time, probably two hours doing anything. Probably two hours at most. And I've done most of the that yammering which I'm good at that. So, but anyway, everybody go to the challenge. Do a Sam Towns challenge. Go read his uh, his requirements and his rules. I need to do that again. And he changed a little bit of it this year. So, like I said, that is today's date. That right there. This is Monday, the 25th of September in the year of 2023 so and the blade we're shooting for nine inch I don't know what I didn't even measure that but with nine inches for the blade right here we only needed three inches that's one third of it for that a simple math on that even so simple I could do it now the only question I have is this can I stay with a hidden tang and use an antler base as a big buoy handle like the old ones should or would or did at one time? And then brass, or should I make a silicone bronze or, or some bronze? Not silicone bronze, what am I talking about? I'm just aluminum, copper, and, and some brass, putting a crucible and melted and poured into a little cup and see what that does and see if I can forge it and make it move and do what I want it to do if it does that'd be great if it don't well that'd be alright too but I'm going to do that tomorrow because zinc in the brass will pollute the forge and uh, when it gets polluted after that I'll probably finish up setting up my Mr. Volcano uh, gas forge that I bought off of Amazon and hook it up and, uh, and use it till I get the other one back together. I didn't want to be without a forge and the other one was Mr. Volcano was less than a hundred dollars so I went after it. So anyway so I'm gonna let you go so until next time when we put out here with this, this is Bobby Shield saying, so long, get out in the shop, make something, do something. Remember, God loves you, nobody else does. I'm out.